Welcome back to the MPO Governing Board Training on Congestion Reduction. This is Module 2.1. I'm your host, Wayne Garcia. And as we briefly mentioned in the module focusing on MPO authority, this presentation will focus on the federally required congestion management process. Today, I'm joined by Tia Boyd, a research associate and planner at the Center for Urban Transportation Research. Thank you for joining us, Tia. Of course. Uh, as we mentioned in those previous modules, this training has been funded through the National Institute for Congestion Reduction and is being conducted by the staff at the Center for Urban Transportation Research at the University of South Florida. Additionally, I have to add that the Association of Metropolitan Planning Organizations, the Florida Metropolitan Planning Organization Advisory Council, and the National Association of Regional Councils each contributed staff resources as a member of the Project Advisory Committee, which provided guidance throughout the creation of all of these modules. So in the module focusing on MPO structure and function, we briefly mentioned that the congestion management process exists, and we said we would describe it in more detail here. So let's start with some basics. What is the congestion management process? It's also known as the CMP. You'll see it mentioned that way a lot. Uh, in a nutshell, Tia, what agencies are required to have a CMP? Well, Wayne, the short answer is that the CMP is a federally required process intended to help MPOs identify congestion on the transportation system and to help develop strategies for addressing that congestion. But federal rules only require the largest MPOs those over 200,000 in population, also known as Transportation Management Areas, or TMAs, to maintain a CMP. That said, any MPO can maintain a CMP, and many smaller MPOs do. Further, the CMP is intended to be an integrated part of the broader MPO planning and programming process. In other words, information coming from the CMP should be connected to the broader MPO planning process and should help MPOs make more informed decisions overall. But the federal government recognizes that MPOs across the country face different issues as it relates to congestion and that a one-size-fits-all approach won't work for every MPO. So the federal rules for developing and implementing a CMP are not prescriptive but rather provide general parameters for MPOs to develop their own preferred congestion management methods and approaches. So wait a second, what do you mean by not prescriptive? Well, it means that while the federal regulations require you to do a CMP, it doesn't really tell you how to do it. It's a flexible process. So can you give us a little more detail on what the federal rules do call for then? Sure. As I already mentioned, the federal rules in general call for the CMP to result in information that is easily and readily usable in making broader planning and programming decisions reflected in the Metropolitan Transportation Plan, or MTP, and the Transportation Improvement Program, or as it's known, TIP, including performance measurements and strategies. The focus of the CMP is for the MPO to give priority consideration to operational and management strategies to improve congestion. We'll talk more about these types of strategies in future modules, but as you can see in the text of the federal rules, the focus is on strategies that manage demand for and on the existing system, particularly if they reduce single occupant vehicle, also known as SOV, travel. The rules also indicate that if the addition of general purpose lanes are deemed appropriate, that those lanes should be designed to support operational and demand management strategies in the future. I'm going to be honest with you, Tia. I'm not entirely sure of what you just said. Could you tell me what that means in English this time? Sure. The rules do get pretty jargony at times. What this means is... If you did your due diligence to analyze the cause of congestion on a certain portion of the transportation system, considered a variety of strategies for addressing the root cause of the congestion, and the most effective strategy ended up being to add capacity by building additional general purpose lanes, and you'll remember from the last module, 
adding single occupant vehicle capacity should be the last option you pursue. That you should also make sure that the improvements also includes the ability to address future demand in the corridor using non-capacity improvements and strategies. Strategies that might be considered include those that improve operations, so-called TISMO or TSMNO strategies, which stands for Transportation Systems Management and Operations, or Change Driver Behavior, TDM, or Transportation Demand Management, or that include design features that accommodate and enhance the use of multiple modes of travel. For example, dynamic message signs could be added as part of the project to alert drivers of conditions ahead and bridge de-icing technology could be added if vehicle crashes have been an issue in the existing corridor. The next module in this series goes in depth about these alternative approaches. But for right now, think of them as tools and strategies that enhance the multimodal performance of the transportation facilities you already have in place. More specifically, the rules lay out what the CMP should achieve. They require MPOs to evaluate system performance and identify the causes of congestion. The rules go on to state that MPOs should evaluate alternative strategies for addressing the identified causes of congestion and to provide information to support planning and programming decisions that will support future action. Federal law also requires a coordinated data collection and system performance monitoring program as part of the CMP. The idea is to ensure that the data collected is usable for broader planning and programming purposes, and even, ideally, by other transportation agencies. Wait a second. A little bit ago, a few slides back, you said that CMP isn't prescriptive, but this sounds pretty prescriptive to me. Ah, Wayne, notice that while the rules state what an MPO must do, they never say how. The MPO is free to make its own decisions in that regard. While the federal government provides plenty of technical support in this area, an MPO is free to find an approach that works within their available resources. For example, in the last slide, I stated that the rules require MPOs to evaluate system performance and identify the causes of congestion. But notice, they don't say how that should be achieved. It's up to each MPO, in concert with their members and transportation partners, to work out the details for their CMP in a manner that works best within the regional context of that metropolitan area. Okay, you've shown us some of the details of the requirements in the federal rule, but what does it all really mean? It boils down to a few simple ideas. The CMP is intended to help MPOs identify the most congested portions of the regional transportation system and make better overall planning and programming decisions using information from the CMP. The CMP is supposed to be objective-driven and technical in nature meaning that it's considering the same data for all portions of the system in an unbiased fashion. The emphasis is always on management and operational strategies, with capacity expansion supporting single occupant vehicle travel as a course of last resort. We'll delve into various management and operational approaches for reducing congestion in the module focusing on congestion and ways to address it. We'll also discuss capacity expansion and when to use it as part of a comprehensive strategy. So what are a few things that the folks at home can do to help them think about how this applies to their particular MPO? A few questions everyone at home may want to consider are things such as, does your MPO maintain a congestion management process? What strategies are emphasized in your MPO CMP? How does your MPO use information from the CMP? And does your MPO CMP influence project funding? Make sure as you go through these lessons, you reinforce what you have learned by talking with your MPO staff. Don't hesitate to reach out to AMPO or NARC with questions or feedback. We're now all a little more familiar with the congestion management process as it's defined in federal rule. In the next module, we'll discuss the nuts and bolts of traffic congestion. We'll learn about the types of congestion, what causes congestion, and then we'll talk about some strategies for addressing congestion. 
Thank you for being with us.